there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. Return subscribers, welcome and thank you for your support. I just wanted to um, share with you an update, really. Um, I've done a video, um, I think last week or so, and I would said that the um, deportation was going to take place on the 15th of February, which is what that guy in the video said. It seems as though it's going to take place on the 11th of February and they've got 50 people who they are deporting to Jamaica. So um, what I'm going to do is read out the um, document from Lee Jasper. Um, they are, and I'm going to um, read out a little bit more just so I'm not even going to try and ad lib and interpret. I think it's much better that I actually read out the published document. So um, they're going to protest against it, of course, which is what they did before. And that did have some positive results. And that's what they intend to do again. The protest will commence at 6 p.m. on Thursday, the 6th of February, opposite Downing Street. So that's only two days away, depending on when you're looking at this video. It, is, it has been called by Barack UK and BAME lawyers. I know that BAME is black and minority ethnics. I'm not quite sure what Barack stands for. But they're Lawyers for Justice, which is an umbrella body for a group of black and Asian race equality activists, lawyers and Windrush justice groups. All are welcome to join. The action is also supported by the Society of Black Lawyers, Black Sox and Momentum Black Caucus. So it sounds quite heavy. So whilst the British government have a lot to answer for, we cannot forget or let off the hook those complicit with the process of deporting people on charter flights, the airlines, security companies, pilots, etc but also governments of countries such as Jamaica who allow these flights to land and who are paid to accept the wholesale illegal deportation of people without consideration of their circumstances and the inhumanity of their treatment. And that's what happened before. You see, Jamaica and other islands, well, some islands are rejecting the planes, but Jamaica actually had a handout and that's why they were supposed to have put up this um, welcome back um, program for deportees. But it's not working like that. The people who are being deported are being treated abominably. They have got no one to meet them. They're left in tents. Some of them have died and it's really horrendous conditions. And so what this protest is about is to ask Jamaica in particular not to accept the plane, not to allow the plane to land. But I reckon Jamaica's already signed a deal. And the deal that they signed last year for them um, to accept the deportees is probably a deal that's going to be, it's not going to be a one year deal. It's probably a three to four year deal and they're going to be tied into it and they're not going to be able to do anything about it. That's just my view. Because when they make these bilateral agreements, it's never for just one year, is it? So I'm sure that they've probably um, made some arrangements to accept deportees into Jamaica for the next two to three years. But the problem is a lot of these deportees have been in the UK from they were children. What do they know about Jamaica? How are they going to acclimatise into that different culture? Yeah, the whole of us over here, we, we talk about, yeah, man, and Jamaica, and we wear our colours, and we go to the club, and, you know, with Jamaica independence, we all put on our colours, and we have the little um, fist in our car with the Jamaica on it. Yeah, that's what we do, because we're acknowledging our heritage. But that doesn't mean that we can actually adapt to the Jamaican culture. I mean, as a mature woman, when I go there, I reckon I could adapt, providing I was self-sufficient and I had enough to get me by 
and enough to reward whoever was supporting me. But as a regular man then, you know, I, I don't know how. Who are they going to have over there? A lot of A lot of people in the UK do not have people in Jamaica. My mother came over here years and years ago. The family that she had in Jamaica have all died. Now, I have um, two brothers in Jamaica, one in South and one in, um, uh, what's the other place called? One in South and one in Christiana. But, you know, and they probably would put me up. Well, I wouldn't say probably. They definitely would. But I'm lucky that they are on my father's side. They're not on my mother's side. I have got no one on my mother's side. And the problem is, is that a lot of people in Jamaica don't have that tie in Jamaica. They don't have people over there. When I went to Jamaica in September, I wanted to see my brothers. But the person I was with didn't want to drive four hours. And it was just circumstances. It was just too far. But with um, them, they would have come and met me if they if they weren't working. But they just happened to be working. But my point is, is that a lot of people don't have family in Jamaica. They don't have people who they've stayed in touch with or connect with. And yet these people are supposed to go to Jamaica somehow and make life. How do they do that? You at least need at least one person who's going to give you a little break and say, look, you, I can give you a roof over your head for, for the next six months then. And then, but even then, even if they do that, they're going to want money in return. These these people in the UK are sending these people over to Jamaica without any money. On minimal. They might, if they had money on them, minimal money. So how are they supposed to survive? And the thing is, even that, that organisation that they've set up for people to um, establish or re not even re because they don't really know Jamaica, but they've set up to accept um, deportees. There's a whole heap of red tape. And I don't know if these people they're deporting, they're sending them even with their passports or ID or whether they're just shipping them on a plane. I think it's absolutely diabolical. Absolutely diabolical how you can send people who have been in the UK from they were three, four years old to a country just because by heritage by heritage only, they're Jamaican. They've lost all kind of touch with Jamaica. And there's no point. Some people say, well, serve you right. You should have stay in touch with your people then. But when you're a child, who do you know? When you, as you get up into your teenage years, you might hear, say, well, you have a little auntie in so-and-so. You have an uncle in so-and-so. Or you have some, but you've never met them. You're not going to just jump on a plane and go and see people who you've never met. So how do they make that? How do they establish that relationship? How do they maintain that relationship when they've never nobody's met anybody? Anyway, let me continue reading this. I always do this. I always go on a little tandem. Anyway, um. That's why we are supporting and encourage people to join the emergency demonstration called by Movement for Justice at 12 noon on Monday the 3rd. What's today? Outside the Jamaican High Commission. That's a bit late, isn't it? What is the point of sending me this? Anyway, the only thing I can tell you about sending you this is because it's to update you then on the... Um, that they told me it was anyway you still need to know that it's happening on the 11th and they've got 50 people targeted to return let me just see what this is this information is still relevant to be honest okay so durham miners gala 2019 have written we are also supporting windrush activist patrick vernon's petition the windrush compensation scheme 
demanding the application of the principles of restorative justice and fairness to victims of the Windrush scandal, repairing the harm done by this government's hostile environment policy and its impact on African and Caribbean communities and others from the Commonwealth. The petition demands the Home Secretary adopt a 10-point plan to right the wrongs of the Windrush scandal. MPs have the opportunity to make amendments to the Windrush Compensation Bill at the second reading of the bill in February, but there's no date. We can have no confidence in this government's commitment to treat people fairly and call upon all good people to support our struggle for justice and oppose state racism. But what are they going to do? Even if you're going to protest, look how they protested um, last year. year later, I think out of all the people, maybe one or two have got compensation. Maybe it's a bit more than that. But the thing is, it's just so difficult to get money out of these people or even to acknowledge because by acknowledging they've done a wrong, they're actually admitting that these people need to be compensated and they don't want to believe. They don't want to compensate them. Do you think they want to give money out to a load of immigrants, what they consider immigrants? Do you think they want to compensate a bunch of immigrants, which is how they view them, whether they're legal or not. As far as they're concerned, OK, we messed up with the Windrush figures. We shipped them all out. We thought they would. It's not our fault that we didn't know um, that these people were Commonwealth and they were legally entitled to the country. But OK, we've shipped them out. We made a boo boo and we're human. That's the way they look at it. Because if they looked at it with any sincerity, and like what um, Theresa May said when she did that big apology, if that was sincere, all the victims of the Windrush, the families of the deportees, would have been compensated. All of them. Not one or two dege dege. One, one guy got compensated after he was dead. He had cancer. They compensated his family after he's dead. What's good? What good is that? He was waiting or he either got compensated and had about two days to live or so, some ridiculous after waiting so long. The stress, because remember, these people who they um, alleged who are illegally deported or who were up for illegal deportation. And then they said, oops, we've made a mistake. These people have no access to jobs they've lost their homes they can't get no they, they a lot of them couldn't get rent no property and it, their whole life is ruined that's what you're dealing with it's not like okay you can deport someone and then oh, oh i've made a mistake um okay we're going to bring them back because during that deportation process the mortgage hasn't been paid They've lost their job. They've been taken out of their job. When they come back, they can't get benefits. It takes about six months to get benefits or whatever. And they, they've lost their job through, their, through the home office negligence or the border force negligence. And yet, they have to wait nearly a year to be compensated. And it's not even nearly a year. That's about one or two. People are still waiting. So what are they supposed to do in between? How are they supposed to live? Anyway, um, I heard, I'm not going to say categorically because I, I haven't found any paperwork, that 50 Jamaicans are due to be deported on the 11th of February, not the 15th. Um, the following was received by Zeta Holborn, co-chair of Barack UK. Um, Given the Windrush scandal, the apology by the government, promises of justice and compensation to people of the Windrush generation and others who came to the UK from the Commonwealth countries threatened with deportation, there should be no mass deportation of anyone to those countries. No, there shouldn't. But do they care? No, of course not. As brazen as anything, 
they deport in 50 more. And that's only Jamaicans. I don't know how many Nigerians. I don't know how many Asians. I don't know how many from other countries. We only know about Jamaicans because the people who vote for me have an interest in what's happening in Jamaica with people from the UK. They say, we started this petition in the spring of 2018 after learning that the government had planned a charter flight to Jamaica, which was to, which was to depart the UK in May 2018, with those of the Windrush generation on it. Following a public outcry, mass deportations on charter flights were suspended to Jamaica because of the Windrush scandal, but not to other countries. Last year, both Theresa May and the then Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, apologised for the treatment of Windrush Generation people in Britain, threatened with forced removal. Theresa May said, those who arrived from the Caribbean before 1973 and lived here permanently without significant periods of time away in the last 30 years have the right to remain in the UK as, as do the vast majority of long-term residents who arrive later and I don't want anyone to be in any doubt about their right to remain here in the United Kingdom. What she doesn't say is the bureaucracy and how you have to prove that you were here before 1973 and all the documentation that you need to say you've been in the country permanently apart from a, shoot, a few short visits all the evidence to show that you've been in the country permanently for, 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 for that duration she doesn't say that does she she makes it look like okay as long as you've been here before 1973 you're fine you can stay it's not that simple as a lot of people found out it's a lot of red tape, it's a lot of bureaucracy, and it's, in, it's, it's um, institutional racism at its highest. Or should I say it, it's worst, I don't even know. Anyway, charter flights are used for mass deportations to a single country. People are detained and removed on such flights, sometimes within two weeks, leaving very little time to get legal support Appeal or, of, appeal or seek an injunction or judicial review. At the time of the planned 2018 flight, we know of two women who were detained at Yarlswood and were booked onto the flight to Jamaica and we have seen the removal notice of one. One woman, Yvonne Williams, has since been taken off the flight and is no longer in detention. Since starting this petition, the other woman, 63-year-old Yvonne Smith, was taken off to and released from the detention centre after being there for nine months. 63 years old! In those rough detention centres. And then detention centres, they're worse than prison. Since then, there has not been a charter flight to Jamaica until the 6th of February 2019, which was one year later. I wonder what it is about February. Why they, why they choose February to ship people off on a charter flight. That's ironic. It's a paradox, isn't it? Ship people off on a charter flight. But anyway, you know what I mean. There has been to there has been to other countries which we think is wrong. So the charter flight to Jamaica was suspended because we created such a hoo ha, but it still went off to the other countries, whichever countries those were. Um, we with other groups campaigned to oppose this new flight once we discovered it through people booked on it that they had started again. The government claimed that there was no Windrush link for those they planned to deport, but we know that for at least half of them, that there was as they had Windrush generation parents or grandparents. That's what I mean. The black people in this country are Windrush generation by heritage. So I don't see how they can, you know, it's all a part of the same stream. You can't separate someone, like even my grandchild now. I can't separate her from my mother, 
who was a Windrush, gen Windrush um, she's a Windrush generation. Can I? Because if it, if, if it wasn't for my daughter, he wouldn't have been born. If it wasn't for me, my daughter wouldn't have been born. And if it wasn't for my mother, I wouldn't have been born. So how can you detach that link? You can't. We're all Windrush. It goes all the way down the line. And then the government claimed there's no Windrush link. They're a bit, a bit cuckoo, aren't they? They haven't got a clue. Not a clue. They also included Commonwealth soldiers who served in the British Army, whose treatment has been akin to the Windrush generation. Some of those targeted were people the Home Office planned to put on last year's flight. They all have strong family ties in the UK. They would not have come to the UK if it were not for the fact that they have a close Windrush Generation family member here. Given the number of reviews and consultations relating to the Windrush scandal have not concluded, we think it is premature to start deporting people. Furthermore, we are aware that some booked on it were awaiting outcomes to their applications for the Windrush scheme. You see that? They're not even waiting until they finish the, the uh, applications. And I said before, I've got a funny feeling those people who have applications pending that they can't be bothered to complete and have been waiting 18 months. It wouldn't surprise me if they put them on the flight as well, because technically they're illegal because they, the, the Home Office haven't pro processed their application. And they are supposed to be covered once the application starts, but they can make their own rules as they go along. We strongly believe there needs to be an in independent public inquiry into the Windrush scandal, something that is backed by trade union and others. The charter flight to Jamaica on the 6th of February 2019 took 29 of the suggested 50 by government, with several doing last minute injunctions and appeals to stop their removal. It would seem the Home Office deliberately misled MPs in Parliament on the 6th of February by stating that all booked on the flight were guilty of serious crimes. This is not true. One 23-year-old received and had served a suspended sentence for good behaviour of seven months for a driving offence. At least 21 were not deported in the end because they had grounds to legally challenge their removal. We oppose such mass deportations and all other aspects of the hostile environment and until the government has set out a clear policy on which people from Commonwealth countries are protected, they should not be authorising charter flights. We further call on the government to address the issue of justice for those who have already been deported to Commonwealth countries to include return to the UK if they wish to permanent leave to remain in the UK and British citizenship if they wish and compensation for their losses to date and the trauma they and their families have experienced, including those who have just been deported in February 2019. This petition wording has been updated to reflect the current situation. And um, Zita Holborn, she's a co-chair of Barak, and her artwork is um, what I'm going to use in um, the video covering this. So I hope you don't mind, Zita. Um, I am going to give you the credit for the artwork, but I thought it was just such a powerful image. And I think if you need to catch people's eyes, you do need an image like that. So um, Zita Holborn is the co-chair of Barrack UK and this petition is now co-signed by BAME Lawyers for Justice, a group of legal representatives, grassroots campaigning organisations and various Windrush justice groups. I, what can I say? If the government ain't going to compensate people for reparations, for slavery and goodness, what other wrongs they have done. I have little faith in them compensating anyone of the Windrush family. I think if they've got a certain amount set aside, 
a certain amount might be fortunate but when they're talking about extending it to families I, I don't have much hope in that but what we do need to do is to I mean 25 out of the 50 and they've got another 50 I didn't notice that they had the date of the 11th of February in any of the documentation I received I was told to go to Twitter Barack UK that's B-A-R-A-C UK so Twitter Barack UK is supposed to give you updates if you're interested but I think you need to tell your people then to be careful and the thing is, I'd understand if the people they were deporting were prisoners who had done more than four years, because technically that's a legal deportation process. If you've done more than four years in prison, they can deport you straight away. But when they're deporting people for, you know, petty driving offences or, you know, having maybe um, a little bit of weed or speeding offences or something like that that's not right but I hope they I hope it went well today um, I'm sorry the information is a bit late I mean I, it was sent to me this morning and I was at work and I didn't even um, I just printed it off because I thought oh my god I haven't really got time to go through it because I'm not supposed to be doing that at work so I did it during my lunch break and um, just printed off a couple of pages. But my point is, is that I didn't realise that the protest took place today. So hopefully we'll get some feedback about that. Um, yeah, I think that's it really. Yeah, I think I'll stop there. Okay then, bye bye.